Hey everybody, in this vlog, I'm actually going to reproduce a very old podcast series I put together maybe 10 years ago, and it was uh, Web Design for Small Business Owners. That was the title, Web Design for Small Business Owners. And the whole point of this podcast was to help small business owners who are thinking about putting up a website, to help them get a good understanding of the big picture, all the different options that are out there and how they should be considered within the context of putting up a website. So things have changed since I did that original podcast. What I'm going to do in this vlog is to go over the main points for 2016-2017. At the same time, I'm going to experiment with a new style of video presentation, which we're going to start as soon as this live presentation I'm doing right now is over. So I'm going to jump right into it where I'm going to be drawing on screen. And let me know if the drawing on screen and my handwritten annotations, if they contribute to the presentation or if they heard it. I am uh, just trying new ideas and I really appreciate the audience, the YouTube audience for uh, Give me your feedback. All right, let's jump into it. This is a web design for small business, and uh, we're going to cover all kinds of subjects that small business owners should be aware of when they are looking at looking at getting a website live on the web or getting a presence live on the web. Thanks for watching. I'm going to call it the Small Business Podcast. This video is actually based on the small business podcast that I created ooh, a decade ago. And essentially, it's a discussion about what you need to know as a small business owner when you want to get your a site live on the web or some presence on the web. So I figure it's been a long time and it makes sense that I go over a few things. So we're going to start with some basic subjects. First, we're going to talk about blogs. CMSs and forums. Let me write that properly. F O R U M S. Okay, forums. So blogs, CMSs, and forums. So a blog, I think most people know what a blog is today. A blog is basically a site where you have regular articles posted and they're date ordered. That's a blog. The most popular blogging software out there is something called WordPress, and it's used quite a bit for small and large companies. It's free, it's pretty easy to install, and you can be up and running very quickly, building out a great looking website where you have articles that you can write and they can be published by this system. It uh, requires a little bit of setup, and if uh, you want to get into it, you're probably going to need some sort of mini course, that's for sure. So with blogs, you have a few options in terms of uh, how you handle a blog. You can do something called self... Hmm, let me try and write that again. You can write self-hosted. Now, a self-hosted blog is basically you have to get your own domain name, you got to rent server space, and then you got to download the WordPress files, the WordPress app that you need to run WordPress, and then you upload this to your own server. This is an overview. I don't expect you to understand all the details about this. All you need to know is when you you are creating a blog, you have two ways. You got number one, you got the self-hosted option. And number two, you can go to uh, WordPress.com where for free, they'll create a blog for you where you don't have to install, install anything. But the problem with that is that you're going to be hosting your site on their website, WordPress.com. So let's say your business was on, uh, I don't know, Tulips. Not that this is available. You would have a domain name called tulips.wordpress.com. Now, the problem with using a hosted solution on WordPress is that A, a lot of the good names are taken. So 
chances are you won't get tulips.wordpress.com. And B, uh, you don't own the site. When you're hosting with WordPress, they own the site. So you might have some restrictions there. So you're, you are exchanging convenience for total control. You lack control when you use a hosting through WordPress. Now, I just mentioned WordPress. WP is short for WordPress. I just mentioned WordPress because it's the most popular one out there. There are other options out there like Blogger and stuff. But when it comes to creating a website for your business, you should have a dedicated website because besides hosting on WordPress.com, you can also have a presence. You can have your pages on Facebook. You can have a Twitter account. You can have Instagram. There's all kinds of different options for you. If you are into videos or you could do videos for your business, you could set up a YouTube channel or a combination of all of these things. Again, this vlog, this video is here to just give you an overview. Okay, so we covered vlogs or blogs using WordPress. You have three options, by the way, for blogs. Let me get rid of that. You got a few options. You got uh, WordPress is the most popular. Then you got Joomla. That's a J-O-O-M-L-A, Joomla. And then another one that's very popular is called Drupal. There are other apps that allow you to create blogs, allow you to create sites on the web where you have a, a management control panel and allows you to easily upload new pages and images and video and so forth. The most popular by far is WordPress, though. And I think probably number two is Joomla. There are pros and cons to each one. I'm not going to get into it in this video, but for most people, I would just suggest using WordPress. You're probably going to have the most luck with that app. It's the easiest one to work with, the easiest one to install. It's the most popular, so there's a whole bunch of resources like templates and prefab uh, websites and plugins that you can use with WordPress. It's pretty powerful, although it does take some work. A CMS. CMS is short for... Content Management System. Now, a content management system is a blog, but much more. WordPress, Joomla, Drupal are content management systems, as well as being blogs. They kind of blurred the lines between a simple blog and a content management system these days. I just wanted you to be aware of what this is. Most people will refer to content management systems simply as a CMS. If we look at our list, finally, we got forums. Now, we've all been to forums where you can post questions, get answers, there's communities. In the old days, a lot of websites would have forums, and I've had forums on killersites.com, and they were very popular in their day. But I've since retired them because now what I find is that people will tend to want to interact on the platform of their choice. So for instance, so you have your website, whatever your website might be, dog uh, doggrooming.com uh, or something, and you have dog grooming services. So instead of having a forum on your site, you may interact with your uh, visitors or your clients or your prospective clients on maybe you have a YouTube channel, YouTube, where you'd put up videos about your how you groom dogs or something. These are just theoretical examples. You may interact with people on Facebook. Some people actually prefer to uh, just engage with you on uh, Twitter, for instance. So there's different, and there's other platforms as well. So instead of having a form on your own website, which you have to install it and configure it and management and make it popular, a lot of people would just rather engage with you on some platform that they tend to go on. For me, it's mostly YouTube, a little bit of Twitter. I do have a Facebook presence, but I don't really do much on Facebook myself. But that's just me. All right, let's talk about the next subject. I'm going to change my ink color because I don't like this red. Domain names. So what's a domain name? A domain name is simply a web address. And it's your website address. So for me, I have, for instance, studioweb.com. 
I have other web addresses. Another big one, my first one. Well, not my first one, but my first one in technology education was killersites.com. And now, some big domain names is like, oof, maybe I should be typing these out. Facebook.com. Then you got Google.com. These are all domain names. They're simply web addresses. So when you want to get your site on the web, you're going to have to buy a domain name. You buy them from companies that are called registrars. And there you have to register your domain name. And the cost could be anywhere from uh, you know, nine bucks a year to much higher. Now you got some people who will try to scam you. They'll try to rent you domain names. Never rent a domain name because they can take it away from you anytime. Unless you really, really need some juicy domain name because you're going to see them out there. People will buy them and then try to sell them to you for very high dollar amounts. Could be thousands, tens of thousands or much more. Keep in mind that domain names are really valued mostly by the traffic they generate. And just because they have a good name, just because you might have a domain name called, I don't know, business.com, I don't even know if I spelled that right, take away an N, um, doesn't mean that it's any good. The thing about this site, is that a good name? Would you pay, would you figure people would be typing in Google? No, Google's a good name because we know it now because it's, it's a very good site, it's got a great service, best search engine in the world now. So keep that in mind. I wouldn't be paying huge money for premium domain names. It's a waste of time, waste of money, because some people try to try to charge you a lot of money for these uh, premium domain names, these premium addresses. Sometimes it may be worth it to a certain extent, but you got to be very careful about spending thousands, because at the end of the day, you have to build up a domain. It's got to have something on there to give people a reason to visit your site. So I wouldn't uh, be spending money on on very expensive domain names that you see out there. The rules of a good domain name. Number one, short. Number two, easy to spell. And number three, easy to remember. So long domain names, problematic. You had a domain name called my super fabulous pet grooming service.com. Not very good, but pet grooming New York. That's a good domain name. Short, easy to spell, words that are not complex. Those are the rules. Hard to do these days because so many domain names are taken up. Ah, next one database driven websites this is an old term comes from the 90s some of you may have heard it basically these are websites where the pages are connected to databases so the information can change over time sites like youtube facebook google your banking site these are database driven websites so many websites these days i think the majority are database driven every wordpress site if you remember wordpress is database driven so you do you create database driven websites with uh, languages programming languages like php which is the most popular then you got uh, python you got uh, ruby java and several others this requires programming this gets into web oops This gets into web app development. You're developing apps, short for application. Exciting stuff. So now you know what a dynamic database driven website is. E commerce. What's that? That's selling on the web, That's selling products, services, add to cart, that kind of stuff. Think Amazon, etc. That's all e-commerce you can do that on your own site it's pretty simple there's many many solutions out there and uh, essentially 
You set up shopping cart systems where people can pick and buy products and services from you. They add it to cart, and then they process, and then they hit send. It processes them usually through credit cards. And you got different companies that allow you to take credit cards and process them. The biggest ones out there are PayPal. There is uh, Stripe. And there are many, many, many others. PayPal, Stripe can be very easy to implement, but you do need programming with Stripe. But with PayPal, you can get by without having to do any programming. They have some tools that make that easy. Next subject. Web templates. These are just prefabricated, prefab websites. You buy them, you get them for free. WordPress, for instance, has many prefab templates. On WordPress, they call their prefab web templates. They call them WP is for WordPress. They call them themes. And these can be used to instantly create your site. Building a website from scratch is not something a lot of people have to do these days because you've got all these great templates you, you should leverage. Templates are very cool. Something is something to consider for sure. Web hosting. What is this? This is basically hosting your website on a web server. A web server is simply a, co a computer that's connected to the web 24 seven. If you wanna get your own website up, you need to buy web hosting. Web hosting is inexpensive. It can be as little as, uh, it could be as little as uh, four to five dollars a month. Well, hosting it could be thousands of dollars a month, but for most companies who are starting out, four to five dollars a month for web hosting is reasonable, and uh, this will get your site up online so you can uh, have the world see what you do. Finally, let's close with the web design workflow. Web design workflow, web design workflow. What is that? That's the process of building a site. I'm gonna go over it very quickly so you get an idea. First of all, you uh, plan the site in terms of the subject, what's gotta be in there. Then you diagram it, what pages you want. So you might do something like, uh, let me push this up. You might go, every website has a, a home page. Just switch my, uh, my pen here. So you're gonna start with the first page. You got your home page, and then from the home page, you might have an about us. I want to say about us. We have another page will be um, I don't know products. Another page might be, uh, I'll just say shopping cart, shopping. You get the idea. So you design a page, you design a flow in terms of the, the skeleton of your website, right? And then once you've done that, then you're gonna, step number three is to uh, figure out the content. What do you want in these pages, right? So because you need to know your content in terms of the text, the images, and so forth. So you can start building menu items, menus in your home page, and all your other pages, so, and figuring out your content's part of it. And then you're gonna go, you're gonna figure out the uh, page structure, how it's gonna look, whether it's gonna be a one column, or it might be a, a, a four column website. Who knows, there's all of these different options. That's where templates can come in handy. You can start checking those out. Finally, once you figure that out, you start you either buy a template, that's an option. And then if you have some basic HTML and CSS skills, you can start modifying the template. You can hire a web designer, and get a WordPress theme or template, and then once you sort of figure all that out, then you gotta start, you gotta buy, oof, 
And it seems like a lot. I'm getting tired just talking about it. Buy a, uh, a domain name. We talked about that before. You're going to buy a domain name. And that will cost you, as I said, anywhere from $9 and up. I would recommend you go for a basic domain names between nine and twenty-five bucks, and that's pretty much it. Once you get your domain name going, and then finally, you got to buy hosting. When you buy hosting, your hosting company will give you the necessary information so you can upload your website, whether it be a template or a custom job, and then. They'll help you to get it live on the web with the domain name you just bought. So this is a, an overview of the whole process. It's already 22 minutes, so I'm going to stop here. I hope you like this written version.